Recording has begun. Thank you. All right, good evening. I'm now calling the Tuesday, June 15th regular meeting of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District Board of Commissioners to order. The time is 7.04 p.m. Please note that in support of the physical distancing during the local public health emergency in accordance with Governor Newsom's executive order, the Relax Brown Act rules during the public health crisis, we are conducting the meeting video via video conference. Because we are video conferencing, we will follow strict protocol for the benefit of the recording. I will indicate when commissioner, staff, presenters, and the public will provide comments. If you've called into the meeting and are not using a webcam, please state your name prior to providing your comment and for the benefit of the recording. Please practice considerate video conferencing etiquette by muting your line when you are not speaking and limiting distracted behavior on camera. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct the roll call. And commissioners, I will be conducting all roll calls this evening in the same order. Please remember the order so that you are prepared to provide your comment or vote. President Warren? Present. Vice President Vaughn? Commissioner Kearney? Here. Commissioner Sherlock? Here. Commissioner Spreen? Here. Commissioner Tonka? Oh, Kavita? Kavita? I think you're on. Can you not hear me? There you go. Now right. we can. Thank you. <laughs> and Commissioner Tyson. Here. Great. All right. So we have uh, six commissioners out of seven present. And for the benefit of the recording, I will also conduct a presenter's consultant and staff roll call. Acting Fire Chief Glass. Present. Uh, Santa Clara County Fire Safe Council Managing Director Rendler. Present. Oh, you are? Wonderful. Uh, strategic Planning Consultant Scott. Present. District Consulting Engineer Jeff Tarantino. Emergency Services Manager oh. Captain Lujan. Oh, Jeff is there. Thank you. I, I am here. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't unmute myself. No sorry. problem. I didn't have time to look at the list beforehand, so I apologize. <laughs> no and problem. Denise is here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, General Manager Logan. Present. Uh, Lead Deputy County Council Chelladen. Present. Assistant County Council Coelho. He won't be attending unless he won't get this one. you're okay. going back to the closed session. No <clears throat> problem. Uh, CERT program analyst BB. Present. All right. And presenters, consultants, and staff are all accounted for. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Um, we are coming from a closed session, as, um, as everyone is aware. Um, we conduct, completed that. We completed our discussion. So we will not be going to closed session at 8.30, so we'll continue with our agenda as planned. So we don't need to accommodate that. Um, okay, so with that, uh, we'll continue with the agenda um, for the regular meeting. Um, what a, uh, uh, okay, so I don't think I need to cover anything else there. So, um, Rest of my president's remarks. Um, so first of all, um, it's almost summer. Welcome everyone. Um, so first of all, um, I'm I'm tremendously pleased to you know maybe steal Jay's thunder, but I want to just congratulate the staff, um, county council, all the people, um, Chief Glass, your team, the fact that you were all able to pull off getting Station Eight manned and i believe it's either started today or with it is eminent that there should be a crew at station eight as we head into <laughs> wave even my dog even my dog approves um that you know this is really important and i think it shows how charlie uh, impactful this team has become uh, and i don't want to diminish you know what what the team has done i think it's it can't, enough, you know, goodness can't be said about it. Um, and then, you know, saw all the pictures and the feedback from the event on Saturday. You know, we're coming out of this time of, you know, the pandemic. And what I saw in the pictures, I'm sorry I wasn't able to attend, was real community. I mean, there was a lot going on there, you know, a big age span and people able to come back together. Um, and build, you know, on the program we have and build for the future. And so um, that's truly impressive. So I want to thank the staff and everyone who made and was able to attend Saturday. I think that was truly important. And it shows the direction that this organization is headed. So thank you, everyone. All right. With that said, we'll now move to item three, which is public comment. 
Um, persons wishing to address the commission on any subject on the agenda may do so now. Please note, however, the commission is not able to undertake extended discussions or actions tonight on items not on the agenda. Items may be referred to staff for appropriate action, which may include placement on the next available agenda. District policy is to limit public testimony to three minutes per speaker, unless the number of speakers requires the commission president to impose a shorter time limit. Do we have any public comment on items not on the agenda? Please raise your hand. I'm not seeing any, Corey, are you seeing any? I don't see or, any, nope. Victoria, okay. All right, hearing none, we will now move to item four, the consent calendar and changes to the um, order of the board commission agenda. So we're moving to items four A through J. And so, um, all right. So are there any comments from the staff on these items? for the consent calendar. Um, yes, um, Board President Warren, this is Jay Logan. I would just like to comment on item G and that was the repair to the struck hydrant. That repair occurred today and I'm pleased to announce the hydrant is back in service. Thank you. Always good. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so the item of removing 12 G, 12, what is it, 12I? 12D. 12D, do we do that now or do we do that in a moment? Well, we would request, uh, it's part of the change of the order of the, of the agenda, so we would like to request to delete that. Okay, so the item on the table is at the moment we are going to remove 12D from the agenda tonight. And the reason is, is that County Council requires additional time to, um, look at the figures and we're not ready to present tonight. That's correct. <laughs> or Chris, if you President, want to... President Warren, I would say it wasn't so much that I, I had questions on the figures. I had some questions with staff um, that were not able to be resolved uh, in time for this meeting. So okay. uh, get those resolved and then uh, we'll figure out what we're gonna do from there. Okay. Does that in any way, shape or form impact? Or because bu the budget year starts one July. This is separate from the budget process in the sense okay. that this is committing long-term funds more than for more than a year. So no, it doesn't affect the budget for July. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Um, so that's the that. So what we're going to do is is that we're going to approve. I'm going to look for a motion. Um, that we approve the consent calendar. If no one else has any items they want to remove from the consent calendar. And um, then when we get to the, actually get, a, get to a motion, we will be also build, um, removing 12D from tonight's agenda, moving it to a future available agenda. Um, so uh, I'll do this formally now. Um, are there any questions from the commission on these items or would any of the commissioners like to make changes to the consent calendar? Hearing none. All right, I will now entertain a motion. Will the commissioner making the motion and the commissioner seconding the motion, please state their name for the benefit of the recording. I would like to move that we approve the consent calendar. And? Commissioner I, Sherlock can second that. But were we, I wanted to remove move item 12D from the commission, the uh, oh. tonight's agenda too. Oh, sorry, Kavita. Go ahead. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make a motion that we approve the consent calendar and remove 12D from the agenda. All right. And Joe, do you second that? Uh, yes, Commissioner Thank Sherlock. you. Thank you. Okay. The item is now open for discussion. Is there any discussion from the commissioners? Seeing none. Is there any public comment on this item? Alan, you got your, <laughs> you're, you're clapping or you got your hand up or you're clapping? Alan, that's the, you, you want to, Alan, do you want to have a comment? Um, I was trying to put my hand up. Um, 
And if I was clapping, I apologize. <laughs> um, I, I didn't see any background on 12D. I know you're removing it from the agenda, but I didn't see anything in the agenda that provided any detail with regards to that. Um, could you comment on what 12D is? Or now that you want to remove it from the agenda, you don't want to comment on it. Thank you. Jay, can we provide a you know, two-second insight on what 12D is? I certainly can, Jay. No, Chris. You, yeah, it's up, up to you, Jay, whatever you prefer. Oh, sure. Thank you. I, I didn't hear my name there. Uh, 12D is a resolution that the commission passes every year for committed funds. And this will give us an opportunity to look more into the resolution process. And I, I believe that's what county council is going to assist us to do. So it's a matter of the language and the resolution. And, uh, and then Chris can, uh, county council can provide any extra detail. Sure, I would just note that there are governmental accounting standards. I believe it's rule 56, where public agencies are um, asked to uh, essentially it doesn't move funds around from different accounts, but it designates funds as either unassigned or committed. There's a few different categories as a way of doing long-term uh, financial planning. And so that's what this resolution relates to. My guess is uh, that, Jay, did we include the, the, the draft resolution of the materials or was that taken out of the public materials because we knew it was gonna be uh, deleted? So it will be, um, analyzed and we, we will either report back at a future meeting or, or bring it back at a future meeting. But in general, it's uh, government accounting standards relating to designating uses of funds uh, based upon the intent of the lo local public agency. So pretty much all public agencies do this, this type of designation, including the district, as Jay mentioned, has done it for several years. Okay. Thank you, Chris. All right. With that, and I see no additional public comments. All right, we will now move to vote. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct a roll call vote. All right, President Warren? Yes. Commissioner Kearney? Yes. Commissioner Sherlock? Yes. Commissioner Spreen? Yes. Commissioner Tonka? I'm not hearing you, Kavita. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, I'm not muted. <laughs> and uh, Commissioner Tyson. Yes. All right. And the motion passes uh, six to zero with one absent. Thank you. All right. We'll now move to item five, the Los Altos Hills County Fire District Administration Monthly Report to the County Commission Committees. All right. F items 5A and B are various documents submitted to by the district to the county. Items 5C and D are reports on the LAFCO County uh, Fire Services Review. General Manager Logan, please provide the reports. Yes, uh, thank you, Board President Warren. I'm happy to answer any questions pertaining to these items. Uh, it was another good report from Management Audit on the progress of the district with the audit recommendations. And this progress was recognized by the Hewlett Committee and I'd like to thank Commissioner Tyson and Commissioner Spreen for attending the FGOC and the Hewlett uh, committee meetings for these monthly reports. Um, and then item 5D1 uh, is the LAFCO Countywide Fire Services Review. And that review now is in progress. And this item is a request for the Board of Commissioners to appoint a commission ad hoc fire review subcommittee as is stated in the item. And the subcommittee would engage with the consultant and staff in the fire review process related to uh, the district and also to the, the countywide uh, fire review process. So as you recall, we had a commission ad hoc subcommittee for the management audit and that was very instrumental and helpful because with the commission meeting just once a month, oftentimes there are activities going on multiple times the month and the subcommittee would be able to assist with those meetings. So thank you, that's the end of my remarks. Okay, thank you, Jay. Mm -hmm. um, so the net net of that is, is that we're looking to form a subcommittee to support the um, both LAFCO and the county um, studies that are going on. So the 
the request here is the commission to approve the formation of a subcommittee, which the scope of those committees is to support both, both of those studies and the term of that subcommittee's existence is tied to the needs of both of those studies. Is County Council, uh, so Chelladin, is that a fair way to bracket the, the boundaries of that subcommittee? Absolutely, yes. I would just note the reason we're doing it this way is so that it is a, what's called an ad hoc subcommittee, so that it is not subject to the meeting rules required under the Brown Act. Um, but that also requires that it be composed of less than a quorum of commission members and uh, and no other members in terms of staff or members of the public. It needs to be just the commission and uh, three or less members. All right, so that means we need three members. Three, my finger's holding up, that's four, we can't do it, three. Okay, or, so we need- Or it could be two, two, it does, as two. long as it's less than a quorum, yeah, it's up to the less commission. Less than a quorum. All right, so we're look, I'm looking for volunteers for to sit on this. All right, so George and uh, Roger have both volunteered to sit on the subcommittee. Um, and if there's no other takers, because of my role here, I think it would be appropriate if I volunteered um, on the subcommittee. And so um, unless there is any other commissioner who would like to elbow me out of the way, <laughs> then I'll speak at once. Okay. All right. Um, all right, so the what I need is a motion to form an ad hoc subcommittee to support the um, the uh, the studies, the county studies, uh, with the members being Commissioner Spring, Commissioner Tyson, and Commissioner Warren. I can do that. Uh, I move that we uh, appoint a three member subcommittee, Commissioner Tyson, Commissioner Spring, and Commissioner Warren, to support the county studies. Thank you, Kavita. I need a second, please. Spring seconds. Thank you, Roger. All right. Um, with that, um, I need. So we have the motion on the floor. Is there any uh, further comments from commission from the commissioners? Seeing none. Is there any comment from the public on this item? All right, hearing none, if there's no further discussion, we'll vote on the creation of the ad hoc fire review subcommittee with commissioners Spree, Tyson and Warren serving as a serving. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct a roll call vote. President Warren? Yes. Commissioner Kearney? Yes. Commissioner Sherlock? Yes. Commissioner Spreen? Yes. Commissioner Tonka? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Okay, and the commission has approved the creation of the ad hoc fire review subcommittee with commissioners Spreen, Tyson, Warren serving by a vote of six to zero with one absent. Very good, thank you very much. All right, we'll now move on to item six, receive Santa Clara County Fire Chief report. Item 6A is the report, Acting Chief, Fire Chief Glass, please provide the report. Good evening, commissioners, members of staff and the public. Uh, on your screen, you should be seeing the May 2021 uh, public service report. Uh, 2021, we're a little bit ahead of pace than where we were for 2020 at 341 calls within the fire district. Uh, that was 67 total calls in May. You can see the disbursement of calls and the weight of that response. And it stays pretty consistent uh, with peak times being around noon and five o'clock. Uh, 40, 40 EMS calls, which contributed to about 60% of the total call volume shown on the pie chart in the large blue section. And then it breaks down from there pretty consistent um, with our normal uh, response, monthly response within the fire district. Uh, response time, uh, again, we met the overall uh, grand total uh, for the response time. However, I do want to identify that on one day we did have engine 71 from the Cupertino fire station that was covering El Monte. Uh, while the El Monte crews were attending their refresher training for wildfire and that engine company did take uh, approximately 14 minutes to get to one call. The call was located off of um, Lidicote Circle 
And uh, it was initially dispatched as a code two response, meaning without the lights and the sirens. So the crew left the station and proceeded uh, with normal traffic patterns. Uh, at some point during that call, then it was upgraded to code three. Uh, so then the engine uh, basically started uh, with a slight delay. However, when we average that into the total calls, you can see that in the rural density area, we arrived at seven minutes and 19 seconds uh, for those 21 code three responses. And again, our urban density call volume, we're shooting for the uh, 759, and we arrived at 619 on average. So again, uh, we did have a misstep on that one call and uh, we did look into it. We are researching it. And again, it was it, it's what I would call an anomaly in the system. And that occasionally happens. The initial call type comes in, it gets coded as code two. And then as we get amplifying information, then we can increase the response of the apparatus. Dollar loss was at $500. Um, it does say incident count one, but when I, I, uh, I did run the numbers and look at it, it appeared to be that it was a uh, baking accident that occurred, $300. And, another, and that was for an engine 70, 76, I believe. Let me pull that up really quick. Yeah, it was a cooking incident that occurred. Uh, owner had a baked item in the oven that caught fire and was extinguished. There was no extension and the damage was to the oven only. Uh, so that's where we had that dollar loss value. Obviously we can, uh, participated in the community events programs uh, and on the map is the disbursement of the calls uh, that we talked about. And I'm happy to answer any questions that the commission may have. All right. Thank you, Chief Glass. Is there any discussion from the commissioners? Commissioner Warner, if I might, yes. um, I do have on the call today and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen really quick if I can remember how to do it. Um, the uh, acting assistant fire chief Suwana Kerkow is on the on the line today. I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, introduce her uh, to the board of commissioners as well as the staff. Suwana will be uh, acting as the assistant fire chief while Chief Bowden is out. Um, the commission may know, and I'll provide a brief update. The fire chief um, did have a back surgery, and the results of that back surgery were not uh, as positive as we had hoped. So the fire chief will be going in for a second surgery sometime in July uh, with an expected recovery of four to six months. So with that being said, um, I will be serving in the acting fire chief role and uh, Chief Kirkow will be serving as the acting assistant chief. So there may be times where I'm unable to attend this meeting just due to a conflict. I will still make every effort to be at this meeting, but in the event that I'm not available, I will have Chief Kirkow uh, attending. Uh, just so a little bit of history, Chief Kirkow is our Deputy Chief of Administration and Planning, and she is uh, responsible for overseeing all of the data for the, the agency. Uh, she also produces these public safety reports in cooperation with our IT division and our operations division. Uh, so she is probably much better suited to discuss some of the anomalies that uh, are found in the data. And uh, when I don't have the answer, she's the one I turn to to help me um, uh, answer Mr. Epstein's questions as, as they come up occasionally. So with that, I'll, I'd like to have Suwana just go ahead and introduce yourself to the commission. Good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to be before you. Can everybody hear me? I'm I just want to make sure I'm okay, good. Um, and again, uh, it's an honor to um, be in this position. I, I do uh, wish and hope, uh, as we all do, for a speedy recovery for Chief Glass. So, uh, uh, Chief sure. Bowden, uh, while Chief Glass is serving as the acting fire chief. And I'm happy I'm always just either in this forum or if you want to reach out to me uh, via email through Chief Glass or directly to me to answer any questions regarding our data. Thank you. And the last thing, if we have one more um, opportunity, I'd just like to share this photo. Um, this is the photo of the very first crew that was assigned to the Palo Alto Station 8 uh, assignment uh, as a result that was discussed in the president's comments earlier. Uh, I just figured that this was a good opportunity to show this crew poised and ready to go to work uh, protecting both Los Altos Hills, Palo Alto and Central Fire District. So again, appreciate the support of the fire district and uh, and Palo Alto as we move this uh, forward. 
That's fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, and welcome, uh, Chief Kirkow. All right, is there any comments, questions from the commission? Any is that a regulation goatee, Chief? I'm sorry, I missed the question. In the Palo Alto crew? Was that a regulation goatee on that uh, engineer? Okay, so that's a great question, Commissioner. Uh, Palo Alto Fire does allow facial hair, which is back to some of the earlier discussions that we had with the general manager of the operational impacts of the, the rules, the regulations, policies, and procedures. Um, those were some of the hurdles that county fire, we, we have policy on tattoos and facial hair. That's just some uh, of the many, many uh, different differences between our agencies. They're not insurmountable, but again, um, definitely there, there is some differences. And that was why we chose to end up having just the full Palo Alto crews for a month and then the full county fire crews for a month. So we didn't end up with those, those little issues. Very good. All right, any other questions for the commissioners? All right, hearing none, we'll move to any public comment on these items. See no hands raised. All right, thank you, Chief Glass. We'll now move to item seven, which is the station eight update. Um, station set, uh, item seven A is the report. General Manager Logan, please provide the report. Uh, yes, well, I uh, I would ask Chief Glass if he has any other comments on the opening of Station 8. I think he probably... No, other than it went off uh, successfully in initial first day. Again, always uh, we'll be watching it and available to support Palo Alto during that first week um, as we get the dispatching is going to be the biggest uh, thing we have to keep an eye on. And we have assigned our Battalion 74. Uh, to keep an eye on every call that's dispatched up there and in these first few weeks to make sure that we're hitting the mark. Okay, thank you. I also wanted to comment that Supervisor Submidian at the Board of Supervisors budget hearing today thanked the District, Central Fire, City of Palo Alto, and Office of County Council for the great work and speed by which the efforts were accomplished and regional benefits for fire and emergency protection afforded by the agreement to open Palo Alto Fire Station 8. And Board President Wasserman also made his congratulations and thanks to Supervisor Submidian. So that's the end of the report on uh, item seven, Fire Station 8. Thank you. Great. Thank you, General Manager Logan. Is there any discussion from the commission on this item? One quick question, um, Chief Glass. When is the first uh, Central Fire crew going to be on duty? Is that July 1st? Yes, sir, it is. And they'll be there all July. Yep, all of July and September. Okay, very good. Just as a point of interest, this picture behind me, I took on my hike a month or two ago on the way up to Station 8. Definitely worth your time for those who haven't been up there. It's, uh, it's a beautiful place and uh, worth your time. Very good. Any other commission comments uh, or questions? All right, is there any public comment on this item? Yes, uh, Jordan. Yes, I have Steve one. Jordan, please. Yes, hi, Steve Jordan with uh, Parisima. Um, congratulations on the opening of Station 8, by the way. I, uh, I'm curious, was uh, LAFCO approval obtained for this, for this um, pr providing service, if I understand it right, outside of the fire district? All right. Uh, County Council Sheldon, can you address that question? You're on mute, Chris. You're on mute. Chris, you're still on mute. Yeah, I understand. LAFCO approval was not obtained. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Any further public questions, comments? All right. Hearing none, we'll now move to item eight the general manager report. Um, item 8A is the report. General Manager Logan, please provide the report. Okay, can everyone see, see the uh, report? Yes. Yep. Okay, sharing the screen. Um, wait, wait, how did we get, how did we wind up big in Japan? <laughs> so uh, this is part of the report. Um, we're, we're very pleased that we're able to offer some of our um, county fire 
uh, programs in uh, various languages. Uh, that's on the cover. And then also Green Waste is now retreating back to their monthly service at Foothill College, no longer using uh, Parisima Park. Uh, so I'm sure that the town is happy to get their park back. So that's the opening for the, um, the first slide. And then moving on, um, and I know when I looked at the emergency services manager and the CERT report, there's all kinds of photos, but just wanted to share my photos and shout out to all the participants at a very lovely teen CERT graduation. And um, I had not seen the fire crew that's in the middle for over a year and a half. And uh, it's just amazing. This was my first event out uh, at a public gathering. So it was very refreshing to be out and see the big smiles and that everybody was just so happy to be back together again. Uh, really a sense of community, as you pointed out, President uh, Warren, very helpful. And then um, this is the dis Defensible Space Fuel Monthly uh, drop-off and just highlights of how it will take place now, reverting back from Parisma Park to Foothill College campus. Social distancing is still in place. COVID restrictions are still in place and um, uh, partnership with Green Waste. And there's a link for more information. We're loading all of this up into the Los Altos Hills County Fire District.org website. And then the last slide just talks about non-English preparedness classes. And when I received the flyer, I reached out to some friends who are fluent in uh, Asian and Pacific languages just to ask about uh, what were there any complications or how the language would work with our community? And these were some of the um, takeaways that I was able to, to gather. Uh, so it's, it was really helpful to me and to the staff to understand the various dimensions when you start getting into presenting classes in other languages and how to post them, how to be sensitive to the language, uh, how to do it appropriately. Uh, because I, I've got to say, when I look at a flyer and I don't really understand what it means, I don't know the appropriateness of it. So we did some research on that and came up with a good result. So I just wanted to share that with the, uh, with the commission. And that's the end of my, my slide program. Uh, thank you. If, any questions? Um, General Manager Logan, I have a request that on Saturday, there's supposed to be a, another, uh, is the yeah. first uh, dro uh, chipping day or brush drop off. Um, and we're going to be back at Parisima. Can we arrange to have a sign put up at Parisima Hills saying that the, the, the drop off has moved back to Foothill because we've trained people for a year to go to Parisima and I could see people going there and not being there and not understanding what's happened. I will reach out to the town about that for sure. Um, That'd be great. Thank you. We have some some. Um, Council members, uh, any comments they want to make, or would you like me to reach out to the town staff? Okay. If you'd reach out to the town staff, that'd be great. Perfect. We'll do. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the commissioners? Joan? Hi. Yeah, I just wanted to say what an incredible event that was, and a shout out to Victoria, Denise, and the team, and all the volunteers that showed up. It was such a positive experience to see that many, it was like 20 teenagers that all got trained to be, you know, certs and um, everybody enjoyed it. Everybody loved being out and having the social interaction again. And it was such a lovely community event. Just wanted to thank you, Victoria, for all the efforts you put in there. It was amazing. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Any other comments, questions from the commissioners? Seeing none, are there any comments or questions from the public? Seeing none, all right, we will now move to item nine, which is receive the emergency services manager's report. This is items nine A and B uh, are the report. Emergency services manager Gluhan and CERT program analyst BB, please provide the reports. Thank you, President Warren. Thank you, commissioners, public and staff members and other presenters. Um, these are some logos of some of the interactions for this report. I'm gonna make this really quick, spend a little bit more time with Victoria's report on the CERT event. Uh, next slide, please. So this is uh, pretty traditional um, of, of what the, the things that I do monthly. Some of the key newer things, I've been attending the other surrounding area fire safe council meetings. Uh, additionally, we had the goats 
uh, come in over the between the period of, of last meeting well they arrived the day before last meeting uh, we did a lot of uh, really nice surveying with that with uh, Jackson's the drones um, and then we continue uh, we're going to be involved I wanted to show up in that right hand corner there's a wild uh, fire uh, the open space committee has arranged for um, Dr. Matteo Gabaletto to come from UC Berkeley and uh, Wednesday night from seven to nine. Um, Victoria, I believe we'll, if we need help, there's a link on our website and I think the town's website to that. It's a Zoom meeting, it is remote. Um, also Commissioner Tyson and myself will be there um, assisting with local questions. And uh, next slide. And then kind of the main focus that I've been trying to move along, uh, we have the shaded evacuation route hardening. It's a shaded fuel break treatment. Um, this is a few pictures of Moody Road. Actually, the bottom right-hand corner is actually El Monte. Um, so this is just finishing up scope and finalizing the letters that go to residents. We're working on the permissions and the, the town uh, interactions. There's approximately three and a half miles. It says three miles here, it's about three and a half going all the way from Page Mill Road down to uh, Stone Stonebrook, right at the college uh, stoplight, right at the college entrance on El Monte. So it'll be both sides of the road. So it actually ends up being about seven miles of treatment altogether because each side of the road is a treatment. So you kind of double that. Um, we will be, there's in the process of being a website about the project being built on Fire Safe Council uh, website, which will be linked to our website. So the, as soon as that's up and live, we'll let you know and, and you can see more details. And then we're working on, we didn't have as much issues around permitting on page mill. This one, we have a lot more issues around permitting. We have a creek, which is a fish and game or fish and wildlife. I'm sorry, wrong, wrong term um, issue. So we have to be really careful and cognizant. There's a lot of biological reports that need to go alongside this. And then obviously road closures, uh, a lot of bicyclists, and you know, it's gonna be hard for them to hear the chippers. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that goes on with this project uh, that's maybe a little bit more involved. It's a pretty, pretty big project. So that's coming up, more information at the next uh, meeting. We should have some more details on letters going out and the scope of work. And next slide. So we'll let Victoria take over. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, quite exciting um, weekend for us, as you've heard already. Um, really um, want to start off by talking about some collaboration because this definitely wasn't just a me um, event. So um, more collaboration on what I do normally scheduled. Um, we're still working with some online damage assessment tools in our CCLT um, program manager meetings, which I chair. Um, we also have been learning about grants that are available for emergency preparedness that I'd like to work on for this year. Um, Always, you know, teens or board meetings. Um, I've been um, helping collaborating with Leisha Smith, um, as well as Joan Sherlock on doing an emergency preparedness fair, hopefully um, in September, uh, focused on wildfire evacuation education. Um, and I'm still attending the ECC meetings um, and working on them to collaborate in some emergency communications drills that are that are much needed. Um, we did have a CERT game night, quite a success. Um, we had about 10 people come. Um, really nice to just hang out and um, play a game and learn how to work together as a team. And we've had some requests to do it uh, uh, more. So we'll definitely be doing that. Um, still working on uh, silver alerts. Um, we need to do a process. So Marsha and I, before she leaves, we'll be putting that together. Thank you to the Sheriff's Office for um, working with us on, um, on that. Um, we're also uh, really gonna be working on um, more in-person public events and our participation in um, different and with different CERT groups in their towns as well. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'll be going to the CERT National Conference in Branson, Missouri. I'm really excited. If anyone knows any good places to go there, let me know. I've never been there. Don't know anything about it. Um, really excited to be able to go there. I'm going to be taking a, um, to training classes and learning some new things about how to push out programs for CERT. So really excited on that. Um, September focus is going to be National Emergency Preparedness Month. Stay tuned for that. Um, Denisa and I are now um, instructors for Stop the Bleed. So we'll be offering some public classes on that as well. Now to the good stuff. Um, so Saturday, we were out there uh, early in the morning with, um, we ended up graduating uh, 19 certs, teen certs, which is um, really, really awesome. And I'm really happy that we had that many. Um, like I said, this is a huge group effort. Um, we've had 21 instructors and volunteers from uh, some different cert programs. 
Um, thank you to Santa Clara County um, Fire uh, Department for allowing us to uh, use their resource, uh, Rescue 74, and your battalion chief, Art Tomasetti. Um, big thank you to Marsha Hovey um, from the town and Heppenstall uh, from the city of Los Altos. Um, obviously, Denise as well. Um, you know, really lots of prep to make this a success. Um, we had some VIPs that came. It was nice to see um, Carl Cahill out there. He actually stayed and I think him, he and Lisa Schmidt talked for a while uh, with Joan and some of our commissioners. They just, you know, were just really enjoying the nice shade and, and the, you know, five-star lunch that I served. Um, we also had uh, Lieutenant Novellas Willie from the Sheriff's Office. Um, and then we had some of our commissioners come, uh, George Tyson, uh, Roger Spreen, Joan Sherlock, and then Jay Logan. Um, they all four were voluntold to do some talking at the graduation ceremony, but I know they are very happy to do it. Um, they were awesome. Um, Jay did a, just a fabulous introduction. Um, and uh, I wish I would have recorded it because it was pretty, it was pretty tremendous. Um, just to kind of give you a little idea, just some action shots. So we had three stations in our morning rotation, fire suppression. We had Ashley St. Sin from Campbell CERT. She's also, I believe, a Hayward firefighter. Um, we had Dave Stewart, Eduardo Arias, and Don Gladstone from Los Altos CERT as well. It was really cool. So each group and each station had multiple um, uh, collaborations there, different CERTs from different CERT uh, areas. And also we had our illustrious uh, Rescue 74. Um, cribbing was run by a Los Altos uh, CERT Harry Guy. We had two of our people, Steve and uh, Mira. And then we had damage assessment station that was run by Los Altos, uh, Patricia Evans and Cookie Murata. And then we had a search and rescue, um, Ed Bridgman from Los Altos Hills, Fred Evans and Art Whipple from Los Altos. Um, the two um, Rescue 74 engine crew were, I cannot remember their names, I'm so sorry, um, were fabulous in showing the kids how to do lifts and carries. Um, very, very, I mean, they were working hard all day, great attitudes, really loved it, loved having them. Um, we had our graduation, there's Jay doing an introduction, um, and then uh, we had uh, Roger, I, sorry, I meant to find a picture of you, Joan, I just couldn't find one, I know I have one, but here's Joan and, and um, George, and then um, uh, Battalion Chief uh, Tomasetti over there. Um, so big thanks to everyone for coming, you guys definitely made the graduation. Um, they weren't done yet, though. We still had to go through a medical op station. So we had five different stations. They learned splinting, head to toe assessment, uh, stop the bleed, triage, and airway. Um, they really loved um, the medical part. I've gotten some feedback from them. And, uh, you know, it's really hard to impress teens. But I will tell you, I got very, very minor, um, you know, feedback that was actually really good suggestions to how we could kind of twist things a little bit. But they loved it. So um, this is your um, graduating uh, new team cert, uh, number one academy for Los Altos Hills. I'm really, really proud of them. And thank you again to um, the commissioners, uh, you know, the staff, um, Santa Clara County Fire Department, City of Los Altos, Town of Los Altos Hills. Um, you know, you guys are what made this program. And I just want to say thank you to all of you. And that is the end of my report. Denise, anything to add? I'm going to go with no. Oh, there nope, we go. Nothing for me. If there's any questions, please feel free. All right. So thank you, EMS Captain. Gluhan and CERT program quarter uh, analyst BB. Is there any discussion from the commission? So we'll start with the shows on my screen. Roger, you're the furthest one to the left. Okay. Uh, just a quick comment. I'm. All of this is really exciting. Uh, but as someone who lives along Moody Road, I'm really excited by this shaded fire break uh, project both for what it's doing and also as a way to really educate a lot of people who live along this corridor. So I'll be looking, I'll be looking forward for ways to whatever website information you, you wanna put up there. I'll try and be thinking of ways to either start email campaigns or something to get all these neighbors here knowing this, because I think they're really gonna get a kick out of knowing what's going on there and why, and that's for fire prevention and fire safety. So I think this is a great chance for us to make a visible, uh, impact and really uh, raise the level of awareness of what the district does. So I'm really excited about it. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks, Roger. And, and one of the really important things is it's really tying the shaded fuel break we have on Page Mill into basically to Highway 280. That was kind of the, it's a, it's a really key evacuation route, um, you know, for either, either direction, going to 280 or getting to Page Mill to go to 280, depending on uh, the, re the evacuation requirements. So 
Um, and then there's a lot of um, private roads up off there, you know, so there's a lot of volume that needs to go on that road. So having it as, um, you know, as, as cool as possible, also for incipient fires, that's, you know, if the, let's say a car fire or something starts, um, Chief Glass can speak, um, or, or uh, Eugenia Rendler, to some of the saves they've had on 17 with the shaded fuel break that was done with that, where they've had really reduced fire spread because of the shaded fuel break treatment on Highway 17. So thank you. All right, thank you. George, I see you got your hand up. Well, I already commented earlier to, to Victoria about how much I enjoyed the teen cert activities. And just, I thought of something to add to that later. And that is certainly, it was great to see the young people, what they were learning. But I tell you, what I really enjoyed also was, was the experienced uh, regular certs who were there to do the training and the names you listed there. Some of them, I had no idea they were Los Altos cert, and, but I already knew them. One per person I stopped working with 18 years ago, he was there. It was so much fun for me. So I just wanted to say, it was great to see the intergenerational aspect of that sharing the experience. And I just know those, those young people, I think I said this in my speech, wherever they go, they're gonna carry this the knowledge with them and they'll be able to help their community where the, wherever that is in the future. Thank you, George. Any other comments from commissioners? I just, um, just to Roger's point, I think you're right. That's a great PR opportunity. It's a great way for us to get the word out and maybe even have something on site while they're doing the work where people can get more info. So that's a great idea. We can work on that, Roger. All right. And I would just like to say regarding the teen cert program, I mean, just to echo what everything everyone else has just said, but I also was thinking about, you know, in the last year the, the, these kids have lost so much in terms of their you know, high school education experience and no, you know, no, no school on purpose. Most of them didn't have in-person school, no sporting events, no dances, all those things that, and I really think that what you gave them was a chance this year to be per, part of something bigger and some sense of community and participation and meaning. And I really think that that's important, was really important this year. And I think it's, that's a good process, you know, program moving forward. But I think it's really been important for this last year for that group of young people. So thank you. President Warren, we do have another opportunity, uh, not this weekend, but then the following weekend, we're doing an adult skills ses session. So Victoria can give you some more details on that if anybody would like to come out and see that one. Great. Thank you, Captain Wilhelm. Any co public comment on this item? Seeing none. All right, we'll now move to item 10, which is the integrated hazardous fuel reduction update. Item 10A is the update from Santa Clara County Fire Safety Council. Managing Director Rendler, please provide the update. Eugenia, you're on mute. There we go. I got it. Okay. I'm not on mute anymore, thank you. <laughs> um, well, a great deal of what I was going to mention, Denise has excitedly mentioned about the Moody El Monte Road escape route or evacuation route. So that's wonderful. One thing I would like to add is that the field verification was recently done between our project manager and Denise, who you know is your project manager on your side. And the drainages were outlined and we looked at the creeks, which Denise has also brought up. But we also verified that your heritage trees are not in the project area. So I just wanted to confirm any potential concerns about the really big heritage trees that are over three feet in diameter. They are all outside your project area and will not be touched by um, the work that's being done to you know, harden that road and that area that the trees are important, they're huge, and they add shade. So they actually help the whole process. I don't know if anybody had concerns or questions about that, but we generally find to the public that that's an important detail. Um, next, I wanted to follow up and just support, show you a little bit of support that we do for the additional, sorry, I lost the screen. We also have a great deal of materials available in nine other languages, and they are approved by the California Office of Emergency Management on our website. And I know I've discussed this, so I think that the links are being built. Sorry, I'm struggling with uh, bandwidth tonight. 
Here we go. Share. Ta -da. So these are the additional languages that we offer disaster guides in and wildfire evacuation. And they also have um, the hazard zones and how to prepare your go bags for in your, um, they call them go boxes or food boxes and things. So it supports the work that you're already doing, you know, specifically with events. And these are easily downloadable off of our website and they can be handed out at anyone's events. They're, you know, public domain, feel free to access them, link to our website, those kinds of things. I think it's important that everyone is starting to really get these materials out here in multiple, multiple languages. And then finally, well, two more things. I to give you another example of what Denise is talking about, a specific example, the evacuation route that was put in on Charcoal Road um, in 2017 by a large collaboration that we led had a car fire on June 1st. And the effectiveness of the way these fuel breaks and the evacuation routes go in, even four years later, that car fire was held to a quarter acre. So the work that we're doing and the work that you know you're providing the funding for is excellent and we're showing that it really, really pays off. We have several successes on Highway 17, which of course was a huge progress, a huge project, but even the side roads and the feeder arteries and things, very important to do the work there too. And then finally, I know that there's been um, discussion and questions and information needed about our home ignition zone inspections. So I'd like to take the chance to answer any questions about what that may, you know, look like, what kind of concerns have come up there, what our process is. And I can also show you the training that we go through as assessors. Did the screen change? Sometimes it, it doesn't change. Okay. So this is, our assessors all go through the NFPA which is your National Fire Protection Association. They're the only people that have a national standard for the home ignition zone assessments. And all of our assess assessors use the home ignition zone courses from here. It's a two day course, hands on. They go through actual, you have to pass mini exams actually on site at, at homes you know, in order to be able to get your certificate to be able to come an assessor. And this is the, the course that we use for that. And our assessments just reopened last month. So we have already completed six more off of the, your particular wait list. We had a wait list of over 80 when we reopened. Los Altos Hills wait list is now down to, well, it was down to 11. We've had two more requests this week. So technically we're at 13 on the wait list right now. And we'll be addressing most of those within the next three weeks is what our, our current schedule, maybe four weeks is to get the last of those finished up. Um, the, the request forms are still open on our website. We never closed the request forms. We just notified people they would be waitlisted until we got down into the orange and yellow tiers, which happened of course last month. So, so are there any questions about our home ignition zone? It's a hot topic right now and people are really interested in them. And so that's why I wanted to give a little bit of space for what does that look like? Because everybody is writing about it and posting about it right now from UC extensions to home hardening workshops and all that type of thing. Great. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Anything else, Eugenia? Nope, those were the big three. Thank you. Thank you Gordon, very much. Gordon has a question. Hang on, let me get to the commission questions. Um, are there questions from commissioners? Or, <clears throat> yeah, questions? this is uh, Commissioner Carney. Okay. Um, Eugenia, I, I um, if, with your permission, Mark. Yeah, please. Um, yeah, I've got a, several questions for you, but I'm filtering them through Jay. I'd really be great to have answers to them as soon as we can get them. Um, we've also got on the line Lisa Schmidt, who's heading up the task force of the town. They're super interested in these issues also. So rather than go through the details on the, on the commission call, we'll take that offline with you and work on that as quickly as we possibly can, I hope. Sure. I believe that Jay and I have turned around some of those today for you. Great. Great. Thank you. Any other commission questions? 
All right, seeing none, um, Kit, Gordon, public comment? Question? Yeah, hi, thank you for taking my question. Um, I'm not sure uh, uh, who it would really be directed to, but I was wondering if it's something the Fire Safe Council might consider. I spent a long time working on water conservation and a very successful program was called the Green Gardeners, teaching landscapers about low water irrigation and low water plants. And I wonder if there's something similar that could be done for fire safety, not to replace, I mean, not to turn every gardener into a home inspection person, but just to understand about um, fire ladders and vegetation near buildings. If there's any kind of fire safe gardener program that um, could at least educate the, uh, the people that are working in a lot of these properties. Thank you. Thank you, Kit. Eugenia, I'll let you take that one take it okay. back and think about it. Well, I can, I can let you know initially that our preferred contractors do go through a defensible space training. That's one of the ways they get to be our preferred contractors and that's who we bid out when we do services for you. And the other big challenge there is that they don't have a lot of time for this. Honestly, we have a program for them and we never got much traction it's not the type of thing that landscapers want to pay their staff to attend. So we're trying to find ways to support that with grants and overcome some of that challenge. But our preferred folks that we do use for your contracts and, and everyone else, they do have training from us. Very good. Thank you, Jenny. Could I, could I just interject that at least with the water uh, conservation program, they did find funding for it and they did pay the gardeners. Um, so it was, you know, they understand the, the financial impact of, of training and time. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Any additional public comment questions? All right. If there's none other, thank you, Eugenia. All right. We'll now move to item 10 B approval of the agreement with David Russ uh, Barnett. Item 10B1 is the report. General Manager Logan, please provide the report. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Board President Warren. Uh, I think this was a really good conversation and thank you to Eugenia Render and to the members of the public that spoke. This very helpful ideas. But because the whole area of integrated hazardous fuel reduction is getting so much attention and is so important and such a key program for the Los Altos Hills County Fire District, uh, we did some research in uh, this represents that, and that is to add resources to our district. And so I'm really pleased tonight to introduce uh, Dave Barnett and to recommend to the commission approval of an independent consultant agreement between the district and Chief Bar Barnett for consulting services related to the integrated hazardous fuel reduction program and projects from June 15th through the end of the year, December 31st. 2021 for up to 20 hours per week. And then in that agreement, you'll see exhibit A is the work plan that is outlined of projects aimed at the integrated fuel, hazardous fuel reduction, such as HIZ, shaded fuel breaks, fuel, fuel breaks, um, and various components of vegetation and fire fuel mitigation. And also to assist uh, with strategic plan goal one, which is the uh, district CWPP Annex 4. And I know we have a very definite time span on that. And I really wanna get some momentum going on the CWPP because it is one of our foundation documents and uh, Chief Barnett can help us with that. Um, I'd like to ask Chief Barnett, he's on the phone and been very diligent listening to the commission meetings to introduce himself, give you some background and comments about his interest in the district and then to answer any questions. And I'd just like to say that um, Chief Barnett and I started talking a couple of weeks ago. And in that time, we've spent a lot of time together and I think he's read as much as I can send him about the commission and the district. So I'm just very impressed with all of the things that he's been able to read and absorb. And I think it'll just be very nice to turn this meeting over to him for a few moments and. Um, Dave, if you're there, would like to introduce you to the Board of Commissioners and to the staff and members of the public. Thank you. Thank you, General Manager Logan. And um, uh, thank you, Commission Commissioners and uh, uh, staff and uh, Chief Glass 
uh, and, every, and the public. It's an honor to be before you. This is my first introduction to any organization virtually. Usually my interviews in the past have been in person. Um, my last interview with the job was 26 years ago with the fire chief. And so um, again, this is an honor. Uh, my goal is to introduce, you know, with some of my experience as it's relevant to what you uh, as board have approved in your strategic plan to talk a little bit, uh, you know, specifically about my project management, you know, be available for questions and also be able to uh, share with you uh, why I'm interested in the job, uh, why I'm interested in working for the district. Um, and so um, I'm gonna share a screen, uh, General Manager Logan, and, and you might forgive me if sometimes, uh, Jay, if I call you Chief Logan, just because that's just how I was brought up. My bosses for the last 25 years have been chiefs. So I will uh, 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 try to uh, be aligned with the uh, organization titles. So um, I'm going to uh, share this PowerPoint with you that shares a little bit and let me set up. Okay. So um, again, my name is Dave Barnett. I, I live in San Mateo right now. Um, I, I'm from the East Coast, went to Berkeley, came out to Berkeley to play water polo for Cal. Yes, against Stanford often. Um, and uh, so hopefully if on this side of the bay, you won't hold that against me. Um, uh, so I did uh, meet my wife in, in Berkeley. We've been married for uh, almost 30 years now, raised two beautiful girls in the peninsula. I've done a lot of bike riding and you know, I'm familiar with Page Mill. I got married, uh, my, my, uh, my, uh, my reception was at the uh, Palo Alto Hills Country Club. I lived in Los Altos Hills for- Dave, uh, are you supposed to be building out your slide? It's just showing your name right now. Yeah, it is, I, I will, I have a- Okay. I, I will, uh, you know, um, there's some animations just so that way right. all the words don't pop up at once. Uh, so I did live in Los Altos for a year. Uh, as I was remodeling in Redwood City um, on Covington. And it was wonderful to be part of that neighborhood and uh, play water polo at Foothill College in my younger days and so forth. So anyway, um, you know, my education, as I said, was at Berkeley, um, Chabot College Paramedic School through Menlo Park. Um, I've also been educated during my 25 years in the department as, a, as an instructor, company officer, chief officer certified through the Office of the State Fire Marshal. Uh, the number of uh, hours I've spent in classrooms since I've got hired um, has been continuous for 25 years and it's been a wonderful experience to continually learn. Um, as an experience, I, I'm currently a battalion chief with San Jose. Um, I'm approaching my 25 year mark and uh, I've been from the, from the time I got, uh, was promoted uh, for, to battalion chief, I've been covering San Jose, South San Jose, which uh, my there's five battalions in San Jose, and uh, I supervise eight stations, uh, 10 different companies in South San Jose. Um, and again, this, um, uh, I did a, a survey uh, through the NASA website. And so I, I cover approximately 125 areas of first response, square miles. And then my population is approximately, a, you know, four and a quarter uh, that I'm, I'm responsible first do. That includes hospital, all the freeways, um, power plants, um, but the wildland areas is a significant interaction with uh, both Cal Fire and then also to my uh, Southwest County Fire. And then during a brief stint, while I was battalion chief from 14 to 17, I was also the, the, the training chief. Uh, I had been the training captain in 607 08 for two years, but I moved into the training position role, which was uh, uh, taught me a lot about budget management project, working with other jurisdictions and so forth. So. Um, I was also a uh, work through the ranks, captain, fire engineer, paramedic, uh, hired initially in 96 through uh, 2006. And um, um, yeah, the, you know, looking at uh, the, the um, uh, service contract that I have and what uh, general manager Logan has asked me to uh, help the district with, uh, I know that vegetation management um, is, is something that you uh, top of the list, one, you know, uh, and getting the, that work done. I have experience in that area um, as, as well as prescribed burns, fire suppression repair, both within San Jose Fire, as well as working with Cal Fire and the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, I was at the Sobranos Fire. Uh, so if you've ever driven by the, the, the Point Sur Lighthouse, um, everything from the Bixby Bridge all the way down to 
uh, the, the Pfeiffer and everything about three miles, actually more than that, it was probably like 10 miles in, was my responsibility to do uh, vegetation and suppression repair in that area, managing crews and uh, uh, working with other jurisdictions there. Uh, prescribed burns, we, we, I've done several, uh, either within San Jose of Recruit Academy, working with county parks uh, with their uh, vegetation management needs to get rid of star thistle and other uh, uh, objectives they had as we aligned that with our training objectives, as well as underneath CAL FIRE's uh, you know, uh, prescription for, for being able to burn. Uh, uh, I've also done uh, a lot of, uh, been involved in a lot of firing operations on incidents. You know, last year at the uh, SCU complex, uh, we had to limit the amount of burning we did uh, because ranchers needed the grass for the winter. So we had to find other control lines uh, south of Mount Hamilton. And that required as an operations person working with the local uh, ranchers and the community, as opposed to just finding a line that was convenient. It was, uh, it was what they needed for their, for their cattle. Um, I've, I've been involved in vegetation management uh, that uh, did prescribed burn in Isabel Valley on the other side as well with uh, um, Cal Fire uh, as ranchers needed brush to be burned for more grass. Um, I've been involved with uh, vegetation management projects that didn't end up getting burned, like for instance, Guadalupe Oaks in San Jose, where they chose goats instead of grass. The fire would have been good for the oaks, but uh, the smoke and the complexity in that area, it wasn't going to work. So we went, uh, the parks went a different direction. And, uh, but the collaboration there, um, you know, uh, didn't result in prescribed fire, but uh, we went through all the pros and cons and the, the directors decided to go uh, a different direction for manage, for vegetation management. So um, I've worked with, in all these projects for vegetation management, um, you know, a lot of other agencies, federal, state, local, to uh, determine what's needed and, and get through to, um, you know, uh, objectives where we as the workers, uh, you know, the agencies and jurisdictions wanted us back. That's pretty much a common theme is, as an operations person, I feel, whether it's a structure fire, an EMS call, um, you know, if we're there to serve and, and we want to leave a good impression and, and we want the, the residents and uh, the stakeholders to want us back. Um, so, and, and, and my involvement, I know there's some alphabet soup as I hear as I talk regionally, UASI, South Bay IMT, and I can answer some of those questions in a future slide, but I have a lot of experience working with uh, local uh, agencies um, in, the re in the county, within the whole Bay Area, as well as statewide. Um, you know, uh, FireScope is the primary organization which manages uh, terminology and all the rules and policies which we operate together in mutual aid that make this, the fire and rescue system work so well, mutual aid. Uh, State Education and, uh, Advisory Committee, I sat on that board to work uh, through training um, across, again, multiple jurisdictions, multiple stakeholders. Um, I'm currently one of the ICs for the South Bay Incident Management Team, one of the managers along with Chief Glass. And uh, uh, so it's been a wonderful experience working regionally. And uh, that's my experience. And, you know, as I said, I, I, I'm doing a lot of talking here and, I'll, and, and I want to allow for some questions. I think that some of the questions that you may have uh, as I take my experience and talk about some of your strategic goals, how I can help in each one. So um, I'm, I'll, unless anybody has an immediate question, I, I think I will, as I said, go into your strategic goals and how I could help there. But does anybody would like to just pause me and, uh, and I'll get a drink of water maybe just for a second. Any questions from the commissioners at this point? Let the man get a drink of water. <laughs> I know, solid for time. All right, Roger's got a question. Yeah, go ahead, Roger. Commissioner. Roger, you're on mute. Sorry for being such a making such a naive mistake. I don't have a question. I just have a statement, which is that you know what's really uh, given this district the momentum and energy it has right now, and what makes it such what's transformed it from what we were three to four years ago is really a reflection of the culture that Chief Logan uh, has created in hiring people like Denise, Victoria, Sarah, who are just getting things done on all fronts. So what I'm surprised and delighted by is to see someone with a combination that I would not have predicted that has both deep domain knowledge, uh, project management experience, 
far beyond you know what we've what we've had here uh, in the previous uh, people and familiarity with local and state agencies that it's, it's a complex patchwork that still confuses me to this day so I think that if um, you know if, if someone's willing to come in and join the culture that we've got that, that Jay has created uh, this kind of expertise really strengthens the teams I, I'm quite excited to see what this can do well I appreciate that Commissioner Spreen and and I want to talk a little bit about you know why the district because um, honestly and uh, Eugenia knows um, you know it was um, I was thinking about what am I going to do after I leave and I wasn't sure if there was a job for me. I mean, what I've done in the state regionally and working together and, get, and uh, managing projects where there's multiple stakeholders and, and jurisdictions involved, public, private, educational, has been immensely rewarding. And so I was thinking, I was, you know, that as Fire Safe Council was looking for uh, potential project managers uh, full time, it wasn't my time to leave. I was planning on leaving in January from uh, and transitioning and, and it's important for me and, and, and Commissioner Spring, I, I appreciate the word secession planning in, in your strategic goal because that is really one of my, um, as a training chief, one of my heart, an organization really can't, you know, needs people to continue and carry the torch of what's happened in the past. So I've really had a plan for the last two years in what I'm responsible for the department to continue uh, so that my organization can continue. And I'm on that path well, where basically by the end of this month, I will have people in place that are trained to do the job that I've been doing and the projects I'm working on. And then I was planning on for the, the last six months through this wildland season, helping them. And, I, and, and so this part-time position uh, will allow me to work for the district and then also help with the transition in, in uh, San Jose Fire and that secession plan. So uh, I, can, I can make sure that uh, I, I leave uh, with the appropriate staff in place there. But what I saw when I saw, you know, when I come into an incident and they, they've hired me or they brought me in mutual aid, there's usually object, there's objectives there. There's a plan. There's an organization in place to make things happen. There's clear objectives stated. You know, in the fire service world, we call that the ICS 202 and 203 in an IP. And when I looked at your strategic plan and I was talking with, with uh, uh, General Manager Logan, it was very clear that you had a strategic plan in place, which very clearly identified objectives and very clearly identified deliverables. Uh, and to see then an organization where not only did they have a staff uh, that was working on those things, they had the commissioners assigned as to, you know, leading that strategic goal and that responsibility is a very, uh, was, was honestly very impressive. And so, you know, re reading your strategic plan, it was solid, uh, it was clear, it was things I could sink my teeth into. Like when I come onto an incident and they tell me they need from, you know, a control line from point A to point B, I have my direction and I put that in with the resources given. And so I feel like, you know, you've got in place with Fire Safe Council, the resources, you've got so much work already in place, you know, in, in place to set the objectives, to set the trajectory. And um, that's phenomenal. I, I've seen, especially in the state and, and, and seen a lot of organizations uh, struggle to do that due to lack of resources and transitions. And so it was very impressive to see that uh, the district had it. And, and one sentence really caught my, my eye. It was uh, this, uh, now more than ever, public agencies, and this is from page one of your strategic plan. Now more than ever, public agencies must coordinate and work together to deliver critical services in a time of increased demands and limited resource. The successor strategic plan process provides the opportunity to evaluate the district's role in the community beyond. We can see overlapping networks of communication, expertise, and support throughout the community and now seek to broaden our regional impact. And basically, as soon as I read that, I just said, how can I help? I mean, I think I can help. And I, I just wanted to say, how can I help? Uh, you know, Commissioner, I mean, uh, General Manager Logan and Denise and and, and, I've, and I've listened to your other meetings. It's clear. There's a clear process in what you have to get work done, clear assignments. It's a place that I know that I'll be held accountable. And so um, really, there was a lot of justification and, and flexibility in this 20 hour a week that allowed me to continue and finish my transition with San Jose, but then step into an organization that really had their, um, their, their, their work, so much work done already and it was easy for me to dovetail and kind of align into what you needed with my experience and with my expertise. 
And so I went through this specifically in preparation for this meeting because I know there's four things, and this is all yours. This is your language. This is nothing new to you. These are your six strategic goals. And, 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 and these are your you know, six uh, uh, descriptions. And I didn't outline all the deliverables. You, know, you as the, the commissioners, if you wanna ask me questions after this on specific deliverables, how I could help. But in looking at my service contract, there's really specific four ones, you know, like um, when I think about what um, uh, you have uh, Commissioner Tyson in the CWCP, you know, I, I, I bring experience to the community um, and stakeholder process and implementation. So when you, you know, there's so much that goes into the CIPP, into the CWPP, sorry, GIS, mapping and understanding of evacuation procedures, what the threats are, um, being able to do that analysis. You know, there's a, there, there's a term in, um, there's a term or a one of the fire orders, base all actions on current and expected fire behavior. So the CWPP needs to be aligned with the expected fire behavior with your fuels, with your topography, with the expected, um, uh, you know, with, with what's gonna happen if there is a fire. So I have knowledge of that, of building lines, of, of determining where they can go, evacuation, right, uh, evacuation routes. I was involved in the Thomas Fire evacuations as a liaison officer. I, I was responsible for San Jose's Colleen Fire last year as the IC where I had to implement evacuations in Almaden Valley. And I understand those impacts. And so a clear sub CW, CWPP is gonna assist with that. And I can dive right in. Right in. And there's some great models around uh, to help guide and uh, us and in, in what that might be. And I look forward to having discussions on that. Um, you know. So you know. Next for me is looking at strategic goal two. You know. I, I know uh, Commissioner Tonka, um, uh, as you're also serving as the mayor of Los Altos, that you have to. You know. What are the other jurisdictions doing? What's happening? What, how do we align with that? When I worked on FireScope. I represented cities north and I had to sit across the table with the US Forest Service representatives and Cal Fire representatives to determine what they need and find win-win solutions and policy and logistics to come out with something that served the public and served the responders to keep them safe and effective. So I know that there's nothing in my specific work plan right now, except potentially uh, you know, meetings and assisting in that area. But I, I know what it's like to sit and, and work with jurisdictions on the left and to the right and all around. Um, you know, in strategic three, I know Commissioner uh, Kearney, you got some work that you want done and you need done. Um, you know, in the fire service world, when there's a fire, we call it putting a black on the map, you know, because we have red lines on the map. And so when we put, when we turn those red lines to black, that's good because we've controlled the lines. So you've got Moody Road and Page Mill Road and all the HIZ and the, you know, getting completed all the 4291 uh, NFPA inspections. And that's already started as Eugenia said. But uh, you know, there's some agencies around that, that, that you know, have the goal of every single house is touched by a 4291 inspection. And I look forward to, if that's the goal that the commission wants to go to, then, then that's what I will be able to work towards. Uh, uh, I'm familiar with budgets. I'm familiar with project management. Most of my budget work has been in the training side of the house. Whereas most of the, my fuels management work has, has gone to, you know, there is a plan in place and not necessarily budget, but, you know, I, I, I know I, I can combine the two. Uh, and I've had to do some of the budget fuels management work with prescribed by fire in the training world. But, you know, uh, I just want to be clear on, on that. Um, but I, I can definitely, um, you know, get, help you get this work done. Um, you know, with four, I know that Commissioner Vaughn isn't here. But an example of a project that I was on um, recently as we implemented SVRCS with the San Jose department is we own the radios, but we don't own the system. So we might own or have a responsibility for the hydrants, but we don't own the water mains. And so we have to work with other companies and jurisdictions and, and, and make sure that there's win-win and those solutions, not just maintenance, but improvements and making sure that it's there for the earthquakes and it's there for the, uh, just, you know, available when, we, when there is a fire. So, um, I, I understand what it means, uh, logistical systems, you know, whether they're fire protection systems or radio systems, infrastructure is so critical. And um, it's, I know what it's like to be on a fire engine where water is uh, 30 miles away and you're needing water tenders. So the hydrant system you have is robust and uh, needs uh, maintaining and consideration of, you know, any potential improvements that would be appropriate. 
So I know, again, that's not part of my work plan, but I know that I can assist Commissioner Vaughn and uh, General Manager Logan in this area. You know, for number five, Commissioner Sherlock, um, you know, there's going to be a huge lift, I think, with this evacuation planning. As I evaluate uh, what's happening with Zone Haven and making sure that the citizens are, um, you know, communicated to of their, you know, role and 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 what the evacuation routes are. You know, we may put them in, but there's as as uh, I, I believe a, a commissioner um, stated that uh, lived on Moody Road uh, that you know, communicating with the residents. It's such an important part of it. I was part of the, as I said, Thomas Fire evacuation and and they have a wonderful robust uh, uh, system down there uh, like Zone Haven, but the communication to the residents and the preparation of those residents. So that way they're not coming out of the road where the fire engines are coming in was, it was is hugely important. And if it's not done correctly, if we're not communicating to the, to the, with the partners and strengthening uh, community resilience, not just putting those systems in place and those plans in place, then that, that can be a huge gap. So I appreciate identifying this as a strategic uh, goal and to, you know, to continue to identify opportunities to benefit you know, a broader regional area and support a common interest because the, the evacuation part is gonna be huge. And then you know, you've got the recovery part of how do we get back to normal when we have emergencies? So I really appreciate that you know the the uh, the, the pro building programs of outreach and communication and education as I've seen in the Teen Cert program. I mean that's so phenomenal that you've done that, and 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 to actually put that on with with children and parent consent and the legal issues and the logistical issues and making that happen speaks a lot to what you're capable of. And then you know in the in the last one you know uh, strategic goal six. Um, you know, I've got to look at, and one of the things that I'm responsible for is the district parcel, see what we can do, succession planning. But it's also, you know, and I know that bringing me on is part of that helping the staff and helping Denise, who can only work 20 hours. But succession planning, you know, um, Chief Spring, I mean, not sorry, Chief Spring, Commissioner Spring is, is one of my, is one of my hearts because, you know, the seeing those teens, one day there might be one of you. One of those teens might come back after going to school and getting a job, might come back and replace one of you. And, and that's really the, the goal of succession planning is from the beginning, getting them young. I mean, maybe someday there'll be kids in open space learning about fuel and, you know, they're four years old and, and maybe that is the start even before teen start, who knows? But seeing that you've already done that and seeing you're working through in that succession plan and identified that as a strategic goal is important. And then, you know, finally to wrap it up, uh, you know, uh, I just wanted to share, you know, for President Warren, a story uh, shared with, uh, with General Manager Logan on the Thomas fire. So because process is so important, I've seen that, you know, having a process, we call it the planning P in ICS is so important to get people, you know, timing of meetings, when are they, where are the agendas, you know, how do we have community input? Because on the Thomas fire, I acted as a liaison. And as you can imagine, the Thomas fire, uh, uh, dozens of agencies, across multiple public safety, public works, law enforcement, emergency management, fire. And so the process that was set up, like you've set up here in, the, in your meeting schedule is just having a community meeting, a cooperators meeting every 10 o'clock. And in that 10 o'clock meeting, the, the, everyone shows up and I was running the meeting and evacuations, the, the, the fire had run through Ventura and Carpentria and was threatening Santa Barbara and so we started the meeting at 10 o'clock and, and we invited everybody we could, every stakeholder we could that we thought was being impacted by the fire, we brought in. The IC was sitting there, the, the incident commander, the operations, the law enforcement, safety, the public information officer are all there for a reason. And that's the process that was set up. And so at the end of the meeting, you know, after people go through the briefing, we allow people to raise their hand and say, do anybody have any concerns they need to have? And so a man raised his hand in the back and he said, yeah, I'm from the Cut Flowers Association and uh, we're losing about $2.2 .2 million a day and the Rose Bowl parade's coming up. Is there something we can do to kind of, you know, help us? And, and literally by seven o'clock the next morning because of the organization and the process set up, again, the, if the process isn't set up, if the meeting isn't set up, if, if they're not set up, this doesn't happen. Within, by seven o'clock the next morning, in, a, in an area that had been hard evacuation, you were having checkpoints with, uh, through the PIO shop and emergency management, you had cut flower association workers being able to get into those 
uh, greenhouses that were deemed safe by safety. Uh, law enforcement had established checkpoints that was communicated to the workers uh, that weren't there at that first meeting. So literally within 24 hours, you had a whole organization, um, a whole cut flowers association that was losing $2.2 million a day. The next day they were losing $200,000 a day. And the, that later on that December, there were some pretty happy grandmothers in Pasadena and pretty happy children in Pasadena because of the work and the process and the organization that was set up, which again, these things don't happen unless the process and organization is set up. And so that one was really rewarding for me because being in the fire service is often put out the fire and leave, but it's really about planning. It's really about teaching people to live with fire, helping them through the evacuations, and then making sure that once you're finished with the fire, that you move to the recovery phase as quickly as possible because we could have saved the house or the greenhouses, but if we don't get the workers back in, then mortgages are lost and um, you know business loans don't get paid off. So I, that really hit home for me. And there's been lots of other examples over my period of, a, of career of a battalion chief where it's so important to holistically look at the needs of a community and not just at putting black on the map and controlling the fire line. That's an important part, but there's so many other pieces to it that, and I'm looking forward to stepping in and diving in as Chief Glass knows and many other people know me in this county, I, I don't, it's either I'm all in or not. So I'm not sure whether I'll be able to wait till January to start if you need me that much, but I'm gonna do everything I can with the 20 hours or a week I can and, and work with uh, General Man Manager Logan in my transition to full time. Thank you for the time. And if you have any questions, I, I can still, and I don't need water. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Um, all right, Jay, anything else you want to say before I take questions and comments from the commission? I think I should just rest my case, but I would like to say that I recommend approval of uh, the independent contractor agreement with David Barnett and uh, open it to questions if, if any commissioners have questions, but that's, that's the end of my comments and questions unless you'd like to move on to a, a, a motion. Thank you. Great, thank you, Jay. George, did you have a question? No, I didn't, but I had two important statements. One is that as the uh, holder of CWPP uh, item number one, I'm enthused to see that this level of support is available to help us with uh, updating that important document, which involves pulling information that, uh, that I can't readily find that I, that I think uh, David could. That's my first statement. My second statement is a little uh, off subject, and, but it, it refers to something you mentioned earlier in your presentations and that is go bears. <laughs> and, and Commissioner uh, Sherlock, can I get a go bears out of you? Go bears. Yep, you bet. You're okay, very welcome then. to our organization. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Me, you know, I got a, right, I got a Berkeley degree too. So, <laughs> you're, so you're in welcome territory here. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> All I can say is who's got the ax? Yeah, don't ask. Don't ask. About that because it doesn't really matter. The axe doesn't really matter because the cow always has the play. It doesn't really matter. Like we could, you could, Stanford could win for every single one from here on out, but we have the play. We have been. <laughs> All right. Any other further questions from the commissioners? No, I'd just like to say thank you for your preparation on this. It was um, the alignment with your experience and our strategic goals really, really helped. And I appreciate it, the time you put in. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So with that, I'll now entertain a motion to accept, uh, approve item 10B1. So um, I'm looking for a motion from a commissioner. So moved, Carney. Need a second, please. Second, Tanka. Thank you. So the item is now open for discussion. Is there any discussion from the commissioners? Is there any public comment on this item? Alan, I see you have your hand up. Alan? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, very impressive presentation. Uh, enjoyed it uh, immensely. Uh, just one question. Um, um, General Manager Logan said the contract was uh, through December 21st. When I look at the contract, it actually says December 22nd. And I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Alan, for the, the uh, Checking, the, checking it, making sure that the details are correct. Thank you. Any other public comment? Questions? All right, hearing none, we will now move to a vote. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct the vote. 
Okay, thank you. And I just want to clarify, um, Mark, you did say that this was to approve item 10 B I, but it's actually just to approve item 10 B. Um, Correct. The 10 B I is the memorandum report. This is item 10 B. Thank you, Corey. You're welcome. Okay. So we're moving or we're make, taking the vote to approve. All right. <laughs> Do I need to amend that motion or? Do we need to amend the motion? Um, sure, sure. You can amend the motion. So moved. A second from. Second. Thank you, Gavita. All right. So the amended motion is on the floor. Any public comment? Any commissioner comment? With that, we're looking for uh, District Clerk Vargas. We're looking for a vote on 10B, please. All right, uh, President Warren. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Kearney. Yes. Commissioner Sherlock. Yes. Commissioner Spreen. Yes. Commissioner Tonka. And Commissioner uh, Tyson. Yes. Okay, and the motion passes six to zero with one absent. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, David. Look forward to working with you, even though you went to the wrong school. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I'm honored by the uh, the unanimous vote of the uh, district, and I look forward to talking with each one of you and uh, to working with the staff. Very good. All right. Thank you. We will now move to item 11 personnel. Item 11A through D are various personnel matter matters. General Manager Logan, please present the items. Uh, yes, thank you. And uh, thank you, um, Chief Barnett, for your, your great presentation. Uh, moving on to item 11A, uh, this is an update on the recruitment of the district operations manager's position. And I have with me uh, tonight the uh, proprietor from uh, its personnel, and that's Rebecca Burnside, who assisted us with the sourcing for this position. And uh, Rebecca, I'll just turn it over to you. And just if, you, if there's any questions, you want to make any comments. But I will say that there were 49 applicants that were looked at. And of those, about five were qualified for consideration. All of that was done in probably about a month's time. So we put a real... Um, urgency behind this recruitment process and through that process and through contacts and sourcing um, uh, Chief Barnett uh, was made available to us and so I, I really appreciate that but at this point I'd like to introduce Rebecca Burnside and she'll provide she provided the sourcing services to the commission if there's any questions. Rebecca are you there? I am. I, can everybody hear me? Yes we can. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Thank you everyone for um, letting me speak to you a little bit about your exciting um, position that I did some sourcing for. Um, I did a lot of outreach to various former department people that were retired were um, people that I uh, targeted. Um, so I did a lot of outreach to various retired city managers, assistant city managers and department heads. And we did field a number of um, good candidates. And I have to say that a number of people had heard of your district um, and were excited about the, the prospect. So. Well, thank you for those comments. Any questions about just the recruitment or anything that will really lead into the next item? Okay. Um, what I would like in 11B is for uh, the commission to consider direction to the general manager to return on July 27th uh, with options and a recommendation for possible employment of a full-time district operation manager. And I think you've seen a candidate that's very high on my list and certainly will be high on your list. Uh, and um, that would be what we can discuss then on July 27th. Um, so I no other comments about that but would like to have conversation if that's the way to, to proceed. All right, so I think, thank you, um, General Manager Logan. So I think what we need to do is, um, you know, want to get a direction from the sense, uh, sense of uh, direction from the commissioners regarding um, item uh, 11B, which is direction from the, to the general manager um, returning on April, excuse me, July 27th, uh, with options and a recommendation for possible employment for a full-time general manager or operations manager, excuse me. Um, so I wanted to get a sense from the commission here so that we can 
um, provide direction to Jay on how she should proceed over the next five weeks. Um, so I think the structure, the structure of this, I want to propose that um, I'm in favor of uh, General Manager Logan coming back with her recommendation and potentially even a um, contract in place um, if she is able to get that in place for a potential hire for a um, operations manager is what I'd like to propose. Any other comments, questions, directions, modifications from my fellow commissioners? Sounds good to me. Kavita, you're, you're, you were, you were muted. Uh, I'd like to support that too. I'd be in favor of that. Joan, were you? As well, yes, I am as well. All right. So Jay, I think you heard it. Um, go ahead and please proceed with putting together your recommendation and potentially even a contract in place. Yeah, so what I'll do is uh, I've asked uh, Rebecca Burnside to suspend the recruitment. I think we have the candidate that you know, we're interested in. Uh, he is in, in played full time right now. We'll be able to provide us some part time consulting. And uh, then uh, toward the end of July, I think uh, Chief Barnett will have a better understanding of where he is with the transition and his succession planning with his 25 year employer. And I can come back with some firm recommendations on how to fill the position and he would be my top candidate. So that Great. just kind of gives you an idea of, of what my mind is and how I would see the next uh, weeks going. In July, you notice we do have a very late um, meeting, which is July 27th. And I'm concerned because now we're getting into fire season. There's a lot that's going to be happening. And I'm just so happy that Chief Barnett is available to us as a consultant and then a very good potential to be the operations manager and can help us get through some tough fire seasons that will go all the way through October, maybe into November as we experienced last year. So this is a very important position and personnel to help us shore up as a fire district to have those kinds of resources and expertise. So that's my comment there. And I think I've got clear direction and, and an understanding with the commission as to how to proceed. Thank you. Great, thank you, Jay. Mm -hmm. Is there any further discussion from the commission? Any comments from the public? All right, seeing none, we'll now move to item 12, which is the financial consultant report. 11C, 11C. Oh, 11C. Yes. Um, comment there. So, yeah, go ahead, Jay, please. Yes. What I'd like to do is just to advise the uh, commission that the uh, there was a health order on May 18th from Santa Clara County Health Department, and it's focused on establishing measures to protect the community from COVID-19. And in those, uh, it is a, a basic way of ascertaining vaccination status of not only employees, but volunteers, contractors, subcontractors. And I just want to assure the commission that I've been able to work very helpfully with uh, county council's office and various members of county council that are specialists in this area. And we do have a good path going forward to be able to comply with those health orders and to be able to ascertain that status and um, just be one of, one of the um, guiding lights for the county as to how employers properly handle the circumstances with uh, COVID-19. And I did want to say that we represented that at the teen cert graduation on Saturday. And one of the things I said to staff is let's be models to the certs and to the volunteers that are here as to how we properly handle outdoor safe gatherings with COVID-19 restrictions in place. So I just wanted to mention that on 11C, thank you. And then if thank I could- you. 11D please. Yeah, move to 11D. I think this is very important. You know, as part of goal six, uh, we're building the district's uh, personnel and infrastructure priorities. And that would be to approve a district anti-discrimination, harassment, retaliation policy. And the policy is there for your review. Uh, we'll put it back on the agenda in July for um, either changes or for adoption. But the policy is modeled from the central fire policy and uh, from has been reviewed by county council. And I do wanna thank uh, county council for helping us pull this together as uh, well as uh, acting chief Glass who provided me the resources to be able to utilize the, the uh, central fire policy. So that's the introduction to, to item D 
and I'll return for at a future meeting and then you can provide direction and we can adopt the policy. Thank you. Great. Back Look back. forward to seeing that on the future agenda. Yes, thank you. That completes uh, items 11. Great, thank you. Any qu further questions from commissioners? Any questions, comments from the public? All right, seeing none, we'll now move to item 12, which is the financial consultant report. Item 12A through CE are the various reports, amendments, and resolutions associated with fiscal 21, 22 budget. Um, item 12D was removed from the agenda under the consent calendar. Financial consultant Vargas, please present the items. All right, thank you. Um, so we can go to the second slide. Um, an update on the uh, county public budget hearings that um, was heard at the Board of Supervisor budget hearing meeting today. The item number 77 was to consider the county executive fiscal year 22 recommended budget. And I'm happy to report that that item passed. And so now it is on to um, the Board of Supervisors meeting of June 17th to finalize the uh, county executive's fiscal year 22 budget. Um, and they, I mentioned at the last meeting, um, the budget as presented at the um, workshops was, um, it had a double entry of um, an extra $500,000. And, and as you can see on the little snapshot that has been corrected. So um, we are now back to um, county executives uh, recommended budget matches the budget that was approved. Um, in revenues and um, expenditures. And then next slide, if I could. <clears throat> We're also um, going to look for items uh, D and C. I am going to ask um, separately for adoption of an amended uh, fiscal year 22 budget, then the fiscal year 22 budget narrative and budget by month uh, spreadsheet. And this just outlines quickly for you the changes that were made. There was no, um, change to the bottom line of contract services. Um, so there was no action necessary uh, at the county level because they just look at that total contract services amount. Um, so we, we moved some numbers around um, that uh, fire engine water tender. We originally had 550, changed it to uh, half a million to match Santa Clara County Central Fire Protection District budget. Uh, station eight, we had originally budgeted uh, 400,000 when now that we have uh, successfully completed that contract, uh, I bumped that up to 575. And uh, then contract services contingency uh, was bumped up from 350 to 400. The apparatus enhancements um, I have discussed with Santa Clara County Central Fire Protection District, that full amount will be paid in the current fiscal year. So it has been completely removed um, from fiscal year 22, which is how I was able to get the extra funding where we needed it uh, in station eight. So um, what we're gonna do tonight is um, item 12B, adopt this amended budget. And uh, because we are not, um, we've deleted 12D from the agenda, um, I guess we're kind of doing a modification of what is in your agenda packet there will be no approval of changes to the committed fund balance. Um, so what you see in your agenda packet um, has new numbers for committed funds for fiscal year 22, but we're going to leave it um, as it was shown in fiscal year 21 until we have further direction um, from county council and the county on that. And the same goes for the budget narrative. So um, approval of 12B and 12C, which I recommend, but with that sort of stickler of, um, we're not changing the committed funds. And that is the end of my report. Great, thank you, Corey. Mm -hmm. All right, so with that, we will, um, are there any clarifying questions from the commissions at this time, commissioners? Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we'll consider items 12 and, and 12B and 12C individually. Um, so what we'll do is one at a time. Um, I will now entertain a motion for item 12B, adoption of the amended budget. So I need a, a motion and a second, please. I moved. Thank you, Kavita. Mm -hmm. 
Who was the second? Was that Joan? It is me. Okay. Thank you. Thank All you. right. President Warren, can you just confirm, please, that the motion includes the recommendation from uh, Ms. Vargas regarding the committed funds, changing that, um, or you know, deleting the reference to the committed funds because we didn't act on 12D? All right, Kavita, did you hear the question from County Council or the, the um, clarification from County Council? I have to accept that. Thank you. Do you support that, Joan, in your second? Yes, I do. Thank you. All right, so the motion is in front of us to adopt 12B. Is there any further discussion from commissioners? Any questions or comments from the public? All right, seeing none, District Clerk Vargas, please conduct a roll call vote. President Warren? Yes. Commissioner Kearney? Yes. Commissioner Sherlock? Yes. Commissioner Spreen? Yes. Commissioner Tonka? I'm sorry, Kavita, I did. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. And uh, Commissioner Tyson? George, um, let's see, on mute, there you go. There we go. Oh, I thought, I guess I was too quick, yes. Okay, wonderful. All right, and the motion uh, passes six to zero with one absent. All right, thank you. Now we'll move to item 12C, adoption of the amended budget narrative and the, mud, and the budget by month. So I need, uh, Chris, do we need to have a similar statement about the committed funds in this amendment? Yes, it would be helpful motion. for the motion to incorporate Corey's recommended changes in uh, relating to committed funds. Thank you. All right. So I'm looking for a motion for 12, 12C. Green will move. Thank you, Roger. Second. Give me a second. Thank you, Kavita. All right. The item is now open for discussion. Is there any discussion from the commissioners? Is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none. All right, we'll now move to vote. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct a roll call vote. President Warren? Yes. Commissioner Kearney? Yes. Commissioner Sherlock? Yes. Commissioner Spreen? Yes. Commissioner Tonka? And Commissioner Tyson? Yes. And the motion passes a six to zero with one absent. All right, thank you very much. We'll now move to item 13, the 2021-2022 uh, strategic plan goals. Item 13A is a report on the implementation of goals two and four. Strategic planning consultant Scott, please introduce the item. Thank you, President Warren. Good evening, everyone. We're uh, pleased to be back with two more updates uh, tonight on goals two and four. And I feel like we had an excellent tutorial on the whole strategic plan by Dave Barnett tonight. And so just going from there, I'm pleased to introduce Commissioner Kavita Tonka. She is a new commissioner and also sits on town council and serves as mayor. And I will pull up these slides and... Um, hey. Um, actually, I, I want to say that none of this would have been possible without uh, the tremendous support that I got from Marcy. She was uh, very cognizant of the fact that I was a new commissioner and uh, constantly kept me updated on the meetings that were occurring and the constant updates that were happening. So thank you for that, Marcy. I really do appreciate it. So uh, in terms of strategic, strategic goal two, for the purposes of today's meeting, I'd like to focus on the two uh, parallel studies that are going on in Santa Clara County. But I guess I would be remiss if I didn't revisit uh, goal two for the sake of the other, other commissioners here today. So uh, the, uh, let me just start by reiterating the key elements of uh, strategic goal two. Uh, the main focus has been to make sure that we continue to follow up on the county management uh, audit reports. Uh, we want to continue participating in the two concurrent studies that are happening in Santa Clara County. Uh, we have uh, established uh, district record management system 
And uh, we've made sure that uh, we follow the county procurement uh, policies and procedures. And as you know, we have been uh, doing all of this and we will continue to make sure that we stay on track and uh, make sure that we address everything that came up in the county management audit recommendations and really stay on top of this. So uh, since October of 2000, uh, uh, Board of Supervisors meeting, uh, the district continues to comply with all the audit recommendations that uh, were approved by the Board of Supervisors. Um, we give uh, written and oral reports at uh, the FGOC and the Hewlett meetings. Uh, writ uh, written reports are also always a bit available uh, in the agenda packages uh, at each meeting that are uh, at meet meeting of the Board of Supervisors. And that really gives us an opportunity to get feedback from not just the Board of Supervisors, but also from the management audit staff. So I think it's a really great mechanism by which we make sure that we're constantly checking in to make sure that we're following all the recommendations with that were in the audit and really staying on track. So um, in terms of records and procurement, uh, we, we worked with the retired city clerk and county staff on uh, records and procedures. Uh, we've digitized all pertinent uh, records. Uh, we utilize the county procurement procedures. And uh, we make sure that all the agreements are reviewed to, uh, to make sure that they, you know, they are legal, they conform to county requirements, and that they're reviewed by county council. So uh, at this present time, as I mentioned earlier, there are two concurrent uh, studies that are really going on in Santa Clara County. Uh, there, this uh, is a really good uh, one pager that uh, really explains in detail about uh, information about the LAFCO study, because in the past, I've been getting a lot of questions about the commonalities and the differences between the LAFCO study and the county study. But this one sheet is really a, a clarifying document, if you will, and really explains um, the key points uh, that the count LAFCO study will focus on. Um, it's also in uh, tonight's agenda as item 5D. And, uh, it's, uh, and if you missed that, it will be on the LAFCO website. So if you wish to refer to it at any point in time, all you need to do is to go to the LAFCO website and it is readily available. Um, a, a point to note that in the far right column, an easy way to sign up for emails and updates uh, uh, would be to click on this link here. And I would recommend that all of us uh, really do this, take the time to do this, because, you know, this way we really are up to date on what's happening and how the lab of study is proceeding and uh, what's really going on. Now, in terms of uh, LAFCO, uh, you know, they have initiated uh, uh, their third round of um, uh, studies. And uh, this one includes a countywide um, by service review. There will be an informational web page that uh, you, will, you can reach out to and look at it for uh, information. There will also be opportunities for uh, public outreach and uh, you know, it's, there'll be a uh, time to do a survey, and uh, I think all of us uh, should uh, remain up to speed and abreast to make sure that, uh, you know, we are aware of the timeline of when this happens. It looks like the outreach will happen between June and July of 2021. Uh, at which time uh, the community survey will happen and there'll also be virtual meetings in July. Uh, in terms of the community survey, our understanding is that there will be eight questions uh, and half of these will be devoted to wildfire preparedness. And, uh, and that's what the consultant tells us now. So, you know, uh, uh, LAFCO will also be hold, uh, holding community meetings uh, and it'll be a good time for residents and members of the community to really weigh in. And, uh, you know, because they are looking for input. And uh, it'll be great if we can uh, do that. Um, 
The LACPA study is really guided by the Technical Advisory Committee, or TAC. It consists of uh, three city managers in Austin. Um, the Los Altos Hills city manager, Carl Cahill, is on this uh, TAC committee, and uh, three fire chiefs. And uh, they have met twice so far. And uh, what they do is uh, really uh, they review the consultant's approach on public outreach and weigh in and really uh, from the experience in terms of what is the best mechanism by which we can make sure that the public inputs we receive is really holistic and rounded and really covers uh, everything that we're looking for to inform ourselves in another study that's uh, complete. And uh, LACCO has uh, certain mandated, uh, uh, you know, review elements, which include, uh, you know, the adequacy of public services, the status of the infrastructure, and uh, the fire district spheres of influence. But other factors have been added uh, to make sure that we cover things that, you know, that were not necessarily on top of our minds. So, you know, looking at climate change, wildland fire risk, regional models for fire services, uh, AMS. So those will be the things that it'll be looking at. Uh, in terms of the county uh, initiated study, the idea is really to evaluate the effectiveness, uh, so to say, of current and emergency services. In light of the increased fire risk and uh, you know wildfire risk, really. Uh, okay, I'm not on a meeting. Overabundance of fuel in the uh, wildland area and uh, the, the climate change that we see uh, in the current uh, environment. So uh, what we can, what we, what they will be doing uh, as well is they'll, they'll be reaching out to and doing a community survey. They will be doing outreach. There will be six town hall meetings, and there'll be a draft report coming out in early 2022. And uh, in terms of uh, you know the county studies, the key areas they will be addressing is of course all the previous studies, but really fire threats virus mitigation, service delivery, resources, and service zones. These really are the key areas the consultant will address in the county study. You know, uh, it's interesting, a uh, lot of people have asked me the question as to what are the differences and similarities between these two concurrent studies. The reality is that these two studies are very similar uh, to the extent that they're really tracking similar similar timeline. They have a similar set of stakeholders who are involved in both studies. But I think it's also the big differences in terms of the oversight. Uh, in terms of the LACPO study, the, the TAC or the Technical Advisory Committee that is uh, com comprised of the three city managers and the fire chiefs, they will really be uh, looking at over the shoulder of the consultant and providing oversight to make sure that we are stay on track. Uh, and in terms of the county study, it will be the chief administrative officer of the county will be responsible for the county study. And of course, the board of supervisors will be overseeing that work. So uh, in terms of future updates, we will be sending reminders to the commissioners and these will be posted on the Los Altos Hills County Fire District website. And I'd like to urge you to you know, stay updated and spread the word because we would like our residents and our greater community to really participate in the online survey opportunities because this is our opportunity to really speak up and uh, address uh, and highlight the issues that we care about and those that are important to our community. Uh, it's also an opportunity to really speak at community meetings and uh, weigh in. Uh, in terms of draft reports, you know, uh, it's, it's a, uh, you know, we will also be able to find out when they'll be available. So uh, as, uh, I'd like to urge you all to go to that link on that one pager and really sign up so that you stay abreast on all, all that is to come 
so that we can really be engaged in this process. So that's what I have for now. And I look forward to really uh, you know, staying abreast on what really happens in these meetings and uh, weigh in when the time comes. So thank you for that opportunity to speak about, uh, you know, go to, and uh, I will keep you posted. Thank you, Commissioner Tonka, for that presentation. Uh, do any commissioners have questions with regard to the presentation? Very good. Well, I just have, I, I'm looking for the link. I think it's in my materials. I'm just digging, you know, might want to remail re that. I will send that out to all the commissioners. I'll, I'll send you the link to the website and you just simply uh, fill out the e-form, put in your name and email address, and then you'll get all the auto, um, auto updates. Great, thank you. Very good. Okay, so we have uh, one other presentation. Um, let me pull up mm -hmm. the slides. And um, we have uh, Commissioner, gosh, sorry. Commissioner Vaughn was scheduled to present and he uh, sent me an email a little while ago. He's been tied up and is not able to make it. However, this presentation is a, a team presentation. So I will kick it off and then we will uh, go from there and just carry forward. And I see Jeff is here with another interesting background. Maybe you can explain that when it comes to your turn, Jeff. Will do. So, um, this is strategic goal number four. Um, and uh, sorry about that. Here we go. We're here to talk about uh, the water system. And this goal revolves around water system infrastructure and the coordination between the district and various regional entities that impact the water system. So just real briefly, um, the protection of property, life safety, and support of fire suppression is uh, supported by um, the district's development of standard operating procedures or SOPs to guide the commission and staff on issues around the hydrant system. And as changes occur, whether it's increased development, an incident that damages part of the system, or a capital project initiated by the town or Parisima Hills water, the SOPs and guidelines and policies will provide parameters for decisions. Um, uh, part of this goal includes collecting and maintaining data about the hydrant system, as well as using district funding to support a portable water resource, a water tender for a central fire. And so um, at this point, I'd like to introduce Jeff Tarantino, Vice President of Freyer and Loretta Inc. to describe progress on several uh, specific aspects of goal four. Great, thank you, Marcy. Apologies for the background noise there. We're at my parents' house and well, my father was very interested in what we were doing in here. So, <laughs> um, so and then as far as my background, uh, the background image there just uh, in, in the spirit of the fire commission and you know, improving resiliency. This is a, a, an image of a of a, um, a raw water pipeline that was destroyed during the CZV fire last year, and and Fire and the is going to be supporting the um, San Lorenzo Valley Water District to to restore service. And so that was something that you know we just I just thought it was an interesting photo that folks on the call may be interested in. So yes, and thank you, Marcy. So um, Fire and Loretta has been assisting the district with engineering services uh, related to the fire system. And um, we have been providing technical assistance, um, not only for responding to fire hydrant strikes and getting those repaired, um, but also um, with uh, reviewing um, policies and procedures for um, addressing fire hydrant strikes, coordination with the water district, coordination with the town. And so in February, um, FNL, with assistance from General Manager Logan and Emergency Services Director Gluhan, we facilitated a discussion amongst um, uh, our partner agencies um, where we have a lot of interface with uh, to, to really identify those areas where we are um, interfacing with those agencies, um, you know, with Persima Hill, how do we respond to fire hydrant strikes? How do we get that fire hydrant um, restored in service in, in a timely manner? And then once the construction is, is completed, restoring that to service. 
Um, working with the town when they have a paving project that may impact um, district fire hydrant facilities. So, so it's really important to really kind of get the stakeholders around the table, kind of identify those critical points of interface. And then um, we are in the process of developing those, those uh, standard operating policies, which will be returned to the commission at a future date uh, to review. Uh, next slide. And uh, as, as the commissioners may recall, uh, the, um, there are two agreements uh, between the County of Santa Clara and Christmas Hills Water District really established um, the responsibilities of the fire district, in particular, uh, the 540 hydrants uh, that the district is, is responsible for. Um, there was a uh, eight phase project um, to, to, re to replace a majority of those fire hydrants uh, between 2010 and 2017. Um, and you know, that, project area was focused really within uh, the Prisma Hills Water Service District, which is one of the two uh, water companies um, that the fire district overlaps with. The, the second um, water purveyor, Cal Water, uh, is, um, actually operates and maintains all the fire hydrants in their district, but we do co uh, collaborate uh, with, with Cal Water as they're um, doing replacement projects and, and, and looking at you know, opportunities to add fire hydrants when appropriate. Um, and, and in addition, uh, Foothill College is within, our, within the fire district and they have their own system of hydrants. Uh, and ultimately for the ongoing maintenance of the, of the hydrants uh, through the existing um, agreement between district and central fire, uh, central fire maintains and, and, uh, all, all of the hydrants within the district. And with that, I will um, turn it over to General Manager Logan. Okay, thank you so much. Um, the um, district has worked with county council to develop an on-call contractor through the bidding process. And in fact, the commission approved that tonight by consent. And so what this does is provide us the on-call contractor to expedite the access and repair to the damage and return the hydrant uh, to service quickly. Uh, without the on-call contractor, um, Jeff Tarantino and myself and county council, it was taking sometimes two to three weeks to get a hydrant repaired because we would have to go through all the logistics and county procurement to be able to put the, the agreement together, assess the damage, and it was too much of a delay. So the on-call contractor puts all of that in process right now. The agreements are all there and we call that contractor for, for quick uh, response. So we're very pleased for that. And then additionally, in the case of road repair or other capital projects, FNL will analyze and coordinate the district responsibilities for large projects that impact multiple entities. And again, County Council has been extremely helpful to us in uh, helping us with those agreements, understanding the alignment between ourselves and other agencies as we do our inter-agency uh, uh, agreements and work and where the, the parameters are that then comport with the management audit findings. So we're on the next slide. We're in the process now of developing a database of relative de details about each of the 540 hydrants. And this information will be helpful in a variety of situations, including responding to hydrant strikes, developing proposals and system-wide functioning and tracking and inventorying the capital assets that the hydrants uh, represent. And I've got to say, um, Jeff, when you showed that picture of the water main after the CZU fire, it kind of made me gulp because that could be us at any day with our, our hydrants and our assets destroyed. And we have to be so vigilant that we maintain, keep them, ensure them, have good records, can go back and restore and revitalize uh, what our assets are. And, and these 540 hydrants certainly represent that. So thank you, next slide. We've talked about the water tender and I'm very excited uh, about this opportunity to make this purchase and then provide this apparatus to, to Central Fire to be able to help us protect our, um, our, our jurisdiction. And this is a mobile water source, uh, resource. We're working with, count, with Central Fire for the purchase and it will provide water for a fire event. And I'll tell you just a quick little story. When I was um, receiving my first um, COVID-19 vaccine, I was talking with a firefighter who was there. And as it turned out, he knew, knew Los Altos Hills very, uh, District very well. And he said to me, I was the first firefighter on site at the burn preserve fire. 
And I said, oh my gosh, what did you do? He said, we were so fortunate. We we had a water tender nearby. Without the water tender, it would have been a very different story. And I said to him, looked him straight in the, in the eye, and I said, you know what? This district is ordering a water tender. We have that in the operation right now. And he said, that's the best thing you can do. Now, I can read a lot of articles. I can talk to a lot of people. But when a when the boots on the ground say that, that have been there and done it, it really meant a lot to me. So I thank Chief Glass and Central Fire for helping us and with, with County Council and also um, the budget process to be able to use our funding and expend the funds for this magnificent apparatus. It's going to be this mobile water device that helps us in so many ways. So um, fire suppression crews will be able to respond quickly. The tender brings the water to where it's needed and then crews can use it from there. And an example again is the burn preserve. Thank you, next slide. And our work continues. Uh, policies will be consistent and can lead to, to more efficient work. Um, running hydrant systems, understanding uh, how to repair them, understanding the collaboration amongst agencies when we have shared um, infrastructure is complicated and developing these standard operating procedures will provide information, will inform the commission when these decisions come to you and you have to make decisions about them. So that's what our policies and our guidelines are all about. And Friar and Loretta, Jeff Tarantino is very helpful in uh, pulling that together for us. And uh, so I think that uh, ends my slides. Thank you. How do we do, Marcy? Well done. Thank you for it. Uh, Miss Melvin. Uh, he's, he's the one that could have really led us through this with all of his expertise as a battalion chief who fought the Oakland Hills fire. So uh, to Melvin out there, uh, we hope we, we did you proud by, by uh, having some slides here. Thank you. And I see a question, Commissioner Kearney. Uh, yeah, it's for uh, Chief Glass, if I may. Go ahead, Commissioner. Is that okay? So Chief Class, um, is that uh, tender um, OES or for, uh, mutual aid, or is that is that going to be dedicated to the district? Um, I think it's a discussion that we can have with the uh, commission as how you want to see it. I mean, my recommendation would be to put it in the mutual aid system um, because you have the ability to then receive mutual aid by um, providing that unit. The way that mutual aid work is, is your district would need to be able to provide reciprocal services to another jurisdiction. So if you hope to receive a water tender, you would then be willing to send your water tender. Um, but again, we can put, uh, have further discussions with the general manager, uh, the potential uh, contractor that the commission is uh, gonna bring on board and the commission uh, as to how to utilize that best within the Los Altos Hills and County. Perfect, thanks. You want to leverage our resources. And Chief Glass, you want to mention how long it takes to get one? You just can't go down and get one easily and handily, what the process we're in right now. Yeah, the process is, uh, it, it, and again, I, I guess I should have given it in the fire chief's update, but I do have an update for the, the Rescue 74 replacement as well. But uh, water tenders, all apparatus takes about a year to build. Um, so from the time that we actually sign on the PO, we go to a pre-construction meeting. Uh, that's when the clock actually starts and the contract is signed. And then we go ahead and, and uh, we'll do a mid-build inspection and then a final inspections and acceptance. And then we place the unit into service. So all told, it takes about, uh, the last build was 400 days. That's what the contractual time was. Uh, we have submitted a request for a, what we call the preliminary drawing uh, and, and long specifications for that unit. The nice thing is, is that we believe Orange County Fire Authority has recently purchased that particular unit, which we think would be very well suited for, for the district. Again, we'll have a, a advisory team from our apparatus committee review it to make sure that it is the right size, the right capability, the appropriate pump, the right si amount of power, uh, the um, proper, proper amount of gallonage. Uh, right now we are currently specking uh, somewhere between 1500 and 2000 gallons, which is equivalent to between three to four fire engines worth of water. So that's, that's very helpful. Um, and again, uh, transitioning to the Rescue 74 project, uh, we did get an update on that. It is in process. So our clock started about 30 days ago. So we should see that uh, sometime about a year from now. Very good. Any other commissioner comments or questions? I see we have a, a question from the member of the public, Alan. 
Yes, thank you very much. Uh, my question is, is uh, where would the tender be housed? How would it be staffed? And um, is it a four wheel drive vehicle? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, uh, the discussion has not been had with the, the general manager on the location of the apparatus. Uh, we are a little bit space limited uh, at the Almonte Fire Station and our current contract requires us to have the truck, the rescue and the type three. So again, we need to look at some alternative options uh, that is that is on the plan before, again, we haven't even bought the, the unit yet. So we have a lot of time to figure these items out before we actually make a, a decision to expend the funds and purchase the unit. Uh, the staffing model, model is typically two personnel. Uh, and again, that can be a cross staffed unit, meaning that two from the rescue move on to that unit and, and the rescue then goes with a fire captain and a driver. And then we have a driver and a firefighter on the water tender. Um, the option for us to also take the type three with the water tender exists in a wildland fire uh, scenario. So uh, again, the staffing uh, requirements have not been uh, particularly uh, ironed out yet, but again, we have a, a model that we currently use and we would, we would recommend that uh, as a starting point. And I, what was the last, was there one more question in there, Alan? I apologize. That's quite all right, Chief Glass. I was just qu uh, questioning whether it was a four wheel drive tender. Oh. Uh, at this point, the one in the picture is uh, four by two. We do not have a four by four water tender. There is a center of gravity concern uh, and we typically don't wanna see a vehicle of that weight off road. They do make them. However, we believe a four by two model is the best uh, solution for the district. Thank you very much. Thank you. President Warren, I would just highlight the comments that Chief Glass and General Manager Logan made that this item will be coming back before your commission to work on the both the operational issues, the financial issues, the deployment issues, all of those things are for future meetings. And uh, and this is really a strategic planning goal set goal setting uh, and goal discussion, but uh, I'm sure we'll be back in front of the commission with uh, all that information. And all those questions are very helpful to guide future staff presentations and deliberations. Yes, thank you for that clarification, Mr. Council uh, Chaldon. Yes. All right. So back to the strategic goals. Any further questions from the commissioners around the report? Any further questions from the public? Marcy, anything to wrap this up? No, thank you to everyone uh, who contributed for these presentations. And uh, that concludes the presentation on item 13. Um, President Warren, I'd like to make a remark that yes. just, just thank you to uh, the commissioners and to Marcy Scott and for our model of aligning a commissioner with each of the goals. I think you can really see in reflection now that we're halfway through the year. This strategic plan was adopted in January of 21 and here we are in June and we've already gotten through six of the goals which are all of the goals and had a nice refresh and update. And I hope you as commissioners feel the motivation of how this strategic plan is setting our blueprint and our path. It truly is becoming and is one of the pillars of the district along with the CWPP and then the budget that resources all of our programs. So I think it's a good time just to kind of stop, think about it, pat yourself on the back and realize awesome achievement. And thank you so much for all the support um, President Warren and the commissioners and Marcy Scott, particularly awesome job. Thank you. And staff. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. All right. So let's close out item 13. Uh, I just have to do the formalities here. Is there any further comments from the commission? Any additional public comments or questions? All right. Hearing none, we'll now move on to item 14 commission member reports. This is the opportunity for commissioners to provide reports on any future agenda topics. Are there any comments from the commissioners on item 14? I'm not seeing any. No. All right, thank you. So if there is none, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none. All right, we'll now move on to item 15, which is on the agenda, but we made a decision earlier that we were able to address all the items we needed to in the previous closed session. So we will actually be skipping item 15 and 16, which was to adjourn to closed session and then to return. 
which brings us to um, item 17, which is adjournment. Uh, this concludes the June 15th, 2021 regular meeting of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District. The President, meeting- President yeah, Warren, it, uh, looks like, it looks like a member of the public has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed, before we get to adjournment, Alan, um, which agenda item is this on? Alan, you're on mute. Thank you very much. Uh, I just wondered if there was a report out from the um, closed session. And um, since I have the mic for just a second, um, Chief Glass, please pass along our best wishes to Chief Bowden for fast recovery. Thank you. The uh, Mr. Pre Mr. President, if I may respond. Please. Please. Uh, so uh, when we started this meeting, there was no report out that was announced by Assistant County Counsel Rob Coelho relating to the special meeting. There was no reportable action taken in closed session for items uh, 15 and 16. Since the commission is not adjourning to closed session, there would be no need to, to do a further reportable action since uh, essentially that item is being uh, deleted from the agenda. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, uh, Chris, for keeping us on track. All right. With that, seeing no further items, uh, this concludes the June 15th, 2021 regular meeting of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District. The meeting is adjourned at 9.25 p.m. The next uh, regular meeting will take place via Zoom, June 20th, uh, 2021 at Actually, 7 p.m. June 27th, that's a typo. <laughs> There's just, okay, so for the record, it's July 27th. 2021 at 7 p.m. Uh, Cert General Analyst Beebe, please stop the recording.